having served the Church of the Larger Fellowship for the past two years in this last year as the Minister of Worship, I can tell you it is distinctly different to worship together like this. Thank you, everyone. This is fabulous. Not that I don't love online worship, but... Some of you may have heard of Frederick Nietzsche's phrase, what doesn't kill me makes me stronger. I have my own version of this. Someone once told me that pain makes you beautiful. And I've kind of changed that and adopted it to a mantra at times that if pain makes me beautiful, I'd better be pretty darn gorgeous when I come out the other side of this one. I hold on to that experience, I hold on to that during times to reassure myself that I will learn from these experiences and become a better person no matter how painful it may seem at the time. Roger Wagner, a Presbyterian minister, tells a story about going to an antique show where he found some Wedgwood china. He splurged and bought an entire shopping bag full of china. Each piece was wrapped carefully and placed in the bag. The most beautiful prized possession was a teapot in pristine condition. When Roger arrived home, he was carrying his bag of treasures up the stairs, and as he reached the top step, he stumbled, and down he went, the bag first. He writes, I couldn't tell if it was the china or my heart that I heard break as the bag hit the landing. Much of the china, including that prized teapot, was shattered. He discarded most of the pieces of the broken shards, but he just couldn't bring himself to get rid of that teapot. Roger decided that he would glue it back together, and he was able to do a reasonable job of it, but the teapot would never be the same. Roger says, today it sits in a display cabinet, and most people don't notice because they don't take it out for a closer look that it's actually a shattered teapot. Much of our brokenness can be like and is like Roger's teapot. When tragedy strikes, sometimes self-inflicted, we pick up those pieces and we do the best glue job that we can to move on. But the cracks or the scars are visible to anyone who looks closely. We've all been broken. We've heard some stories already of brokenness today or wounded at different times. And we all need to find strength and inspiration and the hope that will help make us whole again. There is an ancient Japanese art form called kintsuki, or golden joinery. It involves repairing broken bowls of pottery with lacquer that's been sprinkled with powder of gold. Kintsuki originated in the 15th century when a shogun sent off a damaged tea bowl back to China to be fixed. And what returned was the bowl with these metal staples in the side of it. Quite ugly, and the shogun was not impressed at all. So he suggested that his craftsmen develop some sort of way to render the bowls to be better than they were before, to make them as good as new, if not better. Their answer was Kintsuki, filling the cracks and bonding together the broken pieces with golden lacquer. How amazing would it be if we looked at our own healing as a piece of Kintsuki artwork? If we envisioned our scars as being evidence of powerful and valuable healing rather than as defects. How powerful would it be if we could see ourselves as whole with our scars and all, whole in a new, stronger, and more beautiful way? A little over three years ago, I had my entire thyroid removed because of a couple of lumps that ended up being cancerous. And the surgery has left me with about a one-inch scar on my neck. 
At first, I wore a scarf and I covered it up because I was afraid that it was frightening people. I was a director of religious education at the time. I thought the kids would be afraid to see this scar on my neck. But most of all, I covered it up because I just wanted to be okay. A few days after the surgery, I ran into one of my professors at seminary and I told him a little bit about what had been going on and I shyly showed him the scar and then I covered it back up. And he looked me in the eye with all the love and compassion that he had in his heart and said, you don't have to cover it up. You can let it be seen. That exchange was a turning point by taking off my scarf and allowing the physical evidence of my surgery to be seen, I could begin the emotional healing of having had cancer. It was not until I could acknowledge my brokenness that my healing could even begin. This took the form for me of not hiding my scar, of allowing others to see that pain. Showing my scar allowed others to share with me their stories of healing, their stories of support and encouragement, and people I did not know became a huge part of my healing. Our cracks can be golden and shining. In a meditation in the UU world by, Ravid, by Reverend David Pyle, he states, our capacity to admit when we are hurt, when we are afraid, when we have lost something precious, and when we have lost hope gives us the opportunity to be stronger. Painful places become powerful. Empty places become whole. It may take us a while, sometimes even years, to become like Roger's teapot, to be able to sit on the shelf and acknowledge that our cracks are there, and allowing, upon closer inspection, others to see our scars and deciding to share with some of them about how we came to be wounded, but more importantly, about how we came to heal.